Hi guys. So, sorry that the um, lecture for this week is a little bit late. I've been going all out for work, my full-time job, so um, sorry about that, but we'll get right to it. Keep it short and sweet, like always. So, um, and if you have any questions, let me know. I am actually at work on my lunch break right now, so... <laughs> This is the mill yard at Southern New Hampshire University. Anyway, um, so this week's uh, f uh, module talks a lot about norms and trust and conforming. Those are the things that I want to talk about today. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about, I want to introduce a concept called socialization. Um, the book doesn't really talk about it. It talks about it very briefly, I'm not really sure on what page, but it brings it up very briefly uh, when talking about norms. So what is socialization? Uh, socialization is the process by which we are uh, taught that norms are what norms are. So as a child, you are socialized into believing what, you know, it is to be an American. Um, you're socialized into what it means to be a woman or a girl or a boy. Um, you're socialized into what it means to be from New Hampshire, um, what it means to be a part of a family, what it means to be from New Ham uh, from Manchester. Um, these are all things that you're socialized into. Some of it is biologically derived, or at least the ways in which we um, create those categories is biologically derived, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the norms associated to those biological um, separations or categories are actually um, uh, predetermined. So just because I'm, I am a woman doesn't mean that I am not good with spatial stuff. So there's evidence and research that shows that the majority of women are not good with um, spatial, you know, looking at how to pack things into a trunk, whereas men are really good at that. But as a woman, I actually am really good at that. So just because that's the norm or that's common does not mean that it's biologically or even socially um, a given. So socialization, like I said, is the process by which you come to understand yourself and your establish yourself concept. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is so the reason why I bring that up is because um, Owen talked about socialization briefly in his talking point, talking points. The next thing I want to talk about is conforming. Kylie brought up conforming and she had a problem with the book talking about how women are more likely to conform than men. And she brought up a great point that she disagreed because um, men conform to what society says a man should be just as much as what women, um, that women conform to what society says that they should be. And that's a great point, and I'm going to bring me to my next point, which is social construction. But we'll talk about that um, in a minute. What I want to say is that, well, I totally agree with Kylie. In this context, the book is not talking about society as a whole, but in a small group. So in a small group, women are more likely to acquiesce to the male leaders um, or allow the men in the group to take over um, versus and, and rather than um, standing up for what they believe in or their ideas. So, but it's, you know, men are just as likely to conform in the broader sense. So there's that. And I'd like to actually point out a really interesting example. I was in a class in grad school. It was a gender class, actually. It was, you say that gender people, people usually think, oh, gender, it's, you know, feminism, which is true. It was a feminist class, but it was looking at gender and conflict and the ways in which conflict affect men and women and men differently um, as a whole, like in a, as a, in broad trends, and also how war affects people of different ages. It's very interesting. And one of the things that was really interesting was that this class had 60 people in it. Only eight of them were men, and they were the ones who talked the most in the group. So I always thought that was very interesting. I will say that I was not one of the women who didn't talk, because I'm the type of person who talks a lot. Don't know if you guys caught that. So there's that. Um, so when we're talking about conforming in a larger group, women are more likely to research shows that because of the way that we are socialized into what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a man, women are more likely to acquiesce in the 
broader or in a in a group small group dynamic rather than conforming in a broader sense. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about uh, the difference between the high low status. Sean brought up a really great point, and I think it's a perfect segue for talking about social social construction or the the theory of social construction. He brought up that um, it's that whether you're high status or low status is something that we set for ourselves. Um, so this is not in the book and I wish that it were because it's a great um, way to think about the world um, and that is social constructs. So we talk about <laughs> I, would, I could teach literally an entire course about social construct, construction and socialization. In fact, I'm actually presenting a paper on the socialization of Soviet gender identity in April at a conference at the University of Lancaster, and then another presenting at a second conference at the New Orleans Society Association's annual meeting in New Orleans in June. In any case, <laughs> point is, is that in social constructivism, everything around you, the definitions for everything around you are things that we assign. There is nothing that has an inherent definition. A really great example of this is gender. Um, another really great example is culture or race. These things don't exist except with the meanings that we assign them. So a lot of times you hear people talk about the biological differences between a man and a woman. And those are very real, very tangible things that you can touch differences. However, we assign meaning to those differences. And those, by assigning meaning, we construct ideas around those differences. So when you say Going back to the example about a woman who can under who, who women don't do spatial things very well, that's a social construct um, because it might be generally true, but it's not universally true. So we assign meaning to what it means to be woman. We assign definitions to what it means to be a woman um, that are not or or man or black, or white, or Asian, or gay, or whatever, um, we assign what that means, which is why you have a lot of cultural differences. So, you know, you'll hear a lot of times, well, um, uh, it's, it's a universal truth that murder is bad. So that means that that's not a social construct. But in actuality, that's not necessarily true. Um, since murder takes on a different meaning in a lot of different cultures. So, you know, like, who is, it's acceptable to kill in a, I don't want to get too far into that, but my point is, is that nothing that you say, nothing that you define as being absolute under social constructivist theory is actually absolute. So, Getting back to interna or international relations, interpersonal relations and group dynamics, when you are interacting with a group, it is important to remember that everything that you, the roles that you assign, those things aren't finite. They aren't absolute. So when you identify yourself like Caitlin identified herself as an encourager, right? You can change that. You don't have to always be the encourager. You can be something else. So all of that to say, nothing is absolute, according to social constructivist theory. So if you don't subscri subscribe to that or ascribe to that, that's totally cool. But this is something that I would recommend that you take a, a look into because I definitely find a lot of value in the idea that nothing is absolute. Nothing is black and white. And you should constantly ask. This is why I really encourage you guys to think, why? Why does it mean, why does me wearing makeup mean that I'm a woman? Why can't men wear makeup? You know, why does it mean that I'm an American because I, or I'm Christian because I, 
which I'm not saying that I am, I'm not saying that I'm not, but just, you know, because um, it's none of your business, um, because I don't wear my hair covered. So if I wear my hair covered, does that mean that I'm automatically a Muslim? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I just like the way it looks on me, which is true. It looks really good on me. Um, but my point is, which does not mean that I'm Muslim, I'm just saying, like, Um, my point is, is that question everything. And I've said this a million times to you guys, question everything and don't make assumptions because oftentimes the assumptions that we make are based on erroneous data or they're based on our first impressions or they're based on what our parents told us when we were three that, you know, like on the off chance. For example, my dad told me once that you always dress up when you go to the theater. So he took me to a play one time. He picked me up from my mom's house. I had literally spent like an hour washing the lace gloves that I really wanted to wear. Turns out we were going to an outdoor theater. You know, that was an assumption that my dad told me like literally when I was three. And it sticks with me. You always dress up when you go to the theater. Totally random, but that's something that sticks with you. It's the same thing with social construction. So, um... I'm keep this really quick. Uh, so we talked about high-low status. He said it's something that you assign to ourselves. I think that that's true. But there are other things that play into it as well, such as what your parents told you when you were three um, and what society tells you and your interaction with other cultures and how much money you make actually really plays into it, how much education you have, how much you read. Those are all things that play into your self-concept, right? Um, and those help define who you are social with you know in relation to other people what other people think of you so I think you're right but I think it's a little bit more nuanced than that talking to Sean okay talking to Sean um all right so the last thing I want to talk talk about briefly is the fact that a lot of you, maybe not a lot of you, but several of you have taken um, the worksheet the with the uh, in the book that says, you know, the different types of roles someone can play in the, um, in a, um, in a group and did it with your, I think Nancy did it with her daughter. She went through the worksheet with her daughter. Megan went through it with her coworkers, and they had a really interesting um, reaction from, and a, a really interesting, um, not necessarily, well, she had a, Megan had an interesting debate, and Nancy had an interesting time looking at it from her daughter's perspective. And I just want to say, Kudos to you guys for actually taking what we've been learning and reading about and applying it to your real life relations um, and relationships. It's really great. It's great to see. So, all right. So, um, I did the poll last week about uh, doing independent research and about um, writing an academic essay. I'm a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a more positive response. Um, but for those of you who are interested, I'll be putting out a doodle poll mm, or a regular poll just on the on the the website or on the Moodle page to set up a time to um, do that all together. Because um, I don't think I can do one on ones with each one of you. I just don't have the time. Um, but we can definitely set up a time, maybe sometime this week or next week. Um, but I'm I'm. I'm going to be honest, I am not I'm very impressed with the short essay, essays that I've seen so far. Um, there's been a lot of first person, which is just an, a big no-no for a, an academic paper, and not a lot of outside um, and independent research, just a lot of quoting the book, and then maybe like a second source. So um, I should probably clarify that I'd like to see at least two or three outside sources, um, good sources, and we talked about good sourcing um, in an earlier chapter. So I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed, um, mostly because this is an upper level course. I know this is the first course for, for a few of you, and I've been really impressed with your talking points so far, so it's been a little bit um, disheartening. But we can take the time if you guys decide that you do want to step in, the ones who said that they weren't interested, um, of course that would be available to you. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Again, sorry, this is late. I've just been crazy here. I was in training all weekend, so. 
I will uh, talk to you guys soon. Thanks.